Hello and welcome back to our local multiplayer series. In the last three episodes, we actually set up the core foundation of how a local multiplayer game is set up and ran. So what we're going to do is put it to a test by building a very simple game and showcasing the various few things to look out for when building up a local multiplayer. So let's jump in and take a look. So we're going to do a very basic game of we're going to make it so it spawns little floaty orbs around the map and the players have to collect them to score points. Okay, very simple uh, game setup. So let's just get that first of all working as it should. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a blueprint actor and with points one orb, EP orb. We're gonna add a very simple graphic for this, just like a floating orb. So let's do a sphere. Get it down a bit like that. And because it's floating, we're just going to rise up a little bit off the ground. Just like that. Okay, that'll do. Stuff later. Uh, but the thing I want to do in here is I want to change the collision on this so I can overlap it. So let's go to the sphere collision and I'm going to change it to overlap all. Okay, so this thing's going to disappear when it gets collided with. So let's go to event graph and do actor begin overlap. On actor begin overlap, we're going to check to see if the other actor is a player character. So we can do cast to uh, the third person character. And if that's successful, we want to give that player a point and take away um, the orb. So let's go ahead and get the player controller for this character. Get controller. And get controller, we need to get the player state. And then from the player state, we can cast to our particular one. PS MP game. And I can now give it points. Get points, I can do award points. And I'm gonna award one point. Let's do a hundred, let's make it look a bit more exciting. We'll do a hundred. And then I'm gonna destroy this actor. Now notice something important that you can't in a multiplayer local multiplayer game just do get player character or get player controller without putting in a player index. So he doesn't know what specific one you want. So in this instance, we can't just do a thing like get player get character, compare it to that one, because we need to know if it, get the exact one we want. Okay, because we don't know exactly which one is overlapping it. So that's why we're doing it this way. Okay, and let's, let's put a few orbs in there and see if they do the job. Okay, so if I run over them, Get 100 points up there in the top corner. Working just fine. So the next thing is I need to make it so it spawns these randomly across the map. So a really good way of doing this is by using a nav mesh. So if I go ahead and put in nav mesh bounds volume and stretch that out across the map it will give you the valid points where it could land an orb so if i put p it's going to highlight what is navigable not reachable but navigable and that will indicate where i can place one of my orbs so that there i can tell the game mode just to keep spawning these things in so let's go to the game mode And we'll put a timer on the begin play. Put in a sequence there. And on then one, we're going to do a timer. Set timer by event. Okay. And we'll do every two seconds. On a loop, a looping. We're going to do a create event node. to 
create a matching event and call it spawn orb. And the orb is basically going to grab that nav mesh and spawn randomly based upon what's navigable on it. So I want to type in navigable. And you'll see get random location in navigable radius. So I put that in there. And the origin is basically wherever you want it to be in the map. I'm going to leave it at 000, which is the corner of the map in this case. It's like down here. So I want it to stretch out across the whole entire thing. So the origin, we're just going to go out here and do make vector and leave it at 000. And the radius is how far away the map is. And either way of doing that is going to your top view of your map. Let's zoom out a bit. And there it is. If you hold down the middle mouse button, you can drag out your measuring stick, basically. And we want at least 5,000 by the looks of it. Yeah, 5,000 will cover the whole thing. So let's do 5,000. I'm going to change that back to the perspective view. And change the radius here to 5,000. Go to a random point. Spawn, actor from class, and we're going to choose the BP orb. And we're going to just put that into the location there. So very simple little repeating function here. So if I just stand still, you should see every two seconds an orb appears somewhere that is navigable in the map. Cool. And in this instance, because we're doing a fixed camera perspective, we do have to fix something to do with the character's rotational settings. So at the moment, their rotation is still controlled by the mouse. So if I move the mouse, he will turn around, which we don't want. So we're going to go ahead to our third person character. Uh, in here. And in here, I want to say, go down to the look and I take that off. Okay, need to delete it even, but I'm just going to disconnect it for now. Um, and then on your character movement, you want to make sure that you've got ticked on there, this orient rotation to movement. Okay. So now, I've got WSD movement and the mouse doesn't do anything now. You see the scores are going up just fine. And that's it for our local multiplayer series. I so I just wanted to give you a brief example of how to make a little game with our local multiplayer setup. Uh, but obviously the, the first three episodes will cover almost everything that you need to do with your own local multiplayer game. And hopefully you picked up enough skills to be able to really make some interesting multiplayer setups. Now, if you've liked this series and want to see anything else that we haven't covered, please leave a comment below and we'll try and add them on after at the end of the videos. Uh, but otherwise, if you want to download the project files, you can do so if you're a gold or higher member on our Patreon. Not only do you get access to these files, but all of our files that we've uploaded for the various videos that we've done. So I want to say a massive thank you to all our Patreon members, YouTube members, and everyone else supporting the channel. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you all in the next video.